what in what amount did you offer rental discounts in these six months? Can you disclose that? No, I I, I wouldn't like. Well, there's uh, one thing is that we haven't fully disclosed it to the market. We only provide aggregate number. Uh, but secondly, is uh, we're still at the final stage of negotiating with few tenants. Clearly, we don't want uh, this kind of information to be going to the public space. Um, but what I can say is that um, we were having two approaches. One was a lower uh, discount, but maybe spread over a bit longer period of time. Second was more meaningful, sometimes very meaningful discounts, but only in few months immediately after lockdown. Uh, so we are trying to adapt um, uh, in response to specific tenant, tenants' financial situation and also the levels of turnovers that they were making. So clearly we are providing way less support, if anything, to those tenants that were doing reasonably well immediately after COVID and more to those that were struggling, struggling, uh, struggling more. So clearly we provided materially more to, to cinemas, to F&B operators, and to some uh, more expensive uh, fashion operators uh, than to groceries, uh, pharmacies, and so on. So it was uh, it wasn't one matrix, one number. Uh, it was really worked out by the team in discussions, in negotiations, sometimes very heated negotiations huh. with tenants. As you can imagine, um, there was no real win-win situation. We had to give away some revenue. Uh, they were struggling sometimes for survival. Uh, so you can imagine it was not uh, easy. It still isn't very easy. But I believe we did what we could and we maintained the good relationships with the tenants. Even though at some stage, you know, it was quite nervous um, and tenants were not happy with what we were providing. But uh, at the end of the day, I think the general market consensus is that EPP really came forward well and uh, and did what it could within a reason uh, to help tenants. So uh, I'm honestly happy with uh, uh, with what we did and how we approached the whole uh, situation. All right, that's good to hear. Do you anticipate a full return to collection rates in October already, or do you think it'll take a bit longer? Uh, one thing that we have been doing is that uh, uh, not only we are extending the leases, we are also putting in very clear clauses uh, that require the tenants under strong penalties to pay their rents on a timely basis. So we wanted to get something in return for the concessions we are providing. It wasn't only uh, the extensions, it was also uh, specific language uh, heavily incentivizing the tenants to pay our rents on time. But also they appreciate what we did, and it's also a bit easier um, to, to motivate them to do the timely payments. So the answer is yes. We are already at very good levels. We're well above the 90% collection rates on clearly the today's rental levels, so including the discounts. Uh, tenants continue to pay, um, and uh, we, the expectation is that within the next few weeks we'll be back to pre-COVID collection rates. So on the collection rates, I'm very optimistic that also we did the right thing and tenants feel even more obliged now, not only legally obliged, but also morally obliged, which I know it doesn't guarantee you the payment, but it's just this good addition uh, to the picture uh, to pay us on a timely basis. Definitely. Okay. Do you foresee the third tranche of your metro portfolio transaction to be concluded before the end of the year? That is the uh, that is the plan. We have a very significant liquidity. We have uh, 177 million in cash at the moment. Uh, only a small part of that uh, would be the equity required for closing tranche free. Uh, we're talking to the banks and trying to finalize um, on the best possible terms uh, the senior debt for this acquisition. So uh, uh, clearly, until the deal is closed, it remains unclosed, but uh, it is our intention to try and close this deal by the end of the year. Okay. And then my last question, your results statement mentions that you will dispose of certain groups of assets to reduce your loan to value ratio. Have you earmarked assets for sale yet? 
we want to keep uh, a significant degree of flexibility um, in this decision making. Um, so uh, what uh, what I may say is uh, we don't have to sell. We believe we with a group of 11, 12 senior debt lenders in 2022 and significant headroom on our covenants, uh, we should be able to roll over these debts, refinance uh, most likely with the same providers. We have very strong um, uh, numbers and very significant headroom there. So we don't have to sell uh, because of the uh, existing debt. Uh, we believe in a, we're in a very good position there. We want to sell to lower our LTV in response to general preference of the stock market. Um, but in order to do that, we will only decide to go ahead and do deals if we believe we have the right partner and the right pricing. Um, so uh, we want to keep flexibility. Uh, we'll identify probably a, a, a bigger pool of assets and we'll go and talk to the markets at the beginning of 2021 and later on, but we'll only make decisions to sell if we are getting the right liquidity, the right pricing in return. Um, so no specific assets identified as we speak. We'll make these decisions after we have some initial feedback and we uh, we see the responses uh, from the market for specific assets.